to understand the importance of this game. Here in Humphrey Coliseum this year, Mississippi State has one quad one win in four opportunities. It came against TCU, who's currently number 11 in the net. That was in the Big 12 SEC Challenge. They have another quad one opportunity today. Tolu Smith controls the opening tip. Mississippi State in their cream jerseys. Texas A&M in the dark jerseys on the road. Aggies riding a six-game winning streak. It's the longest current winning streak in the SEC and the longest for Texas A&M since the 2015-16 season. Tolu Smith dumps it off inside. Cam Matthews off the window. No, and a rebound to Dexter Dennis. Starting five for Texas A&M. This has been the group that they have ridden for the last month and a half of the season. Dennis, Wade Taylor, the fourth. Boots Radford, Henry Coleman, and Julius Marble. On the drive, a kick out. Wade Taylor turns it over. Looking for Boots Radford on a baseline cut. They were not on the same page and threw it away. Both of these teams, as they settle in their action, look to see some long sets, trying to find the highest of quality shots. Mississippi State, not known for outside shooting, but they love to get it in, pound it in the interior, and try to impose their will. Deshaun Davis running the point for Mississippi State. He dumps it inside. Tolu Smith, reverse layup is good. Beautiful move by Tolu Smith on the baseline. He does an outstanding job of finding his defenders, using the rim to shield that shot blocker. Tolu Smith coming off a double-double against Missouri. 14 points and 10 rebounds, but had to work as hard for that double-double as at any point this season. Missouri doubled him on every single possession. We look to see a lot more doubles tonight. They understand that Tolu Smith is a very, very strong weapon for this ball team, and as he goes, he sets the tone for the team. Dexter Dennis off on the three. Davis with the rebound. Heel Moore, five by a three, and stand drive baseline, draws the foul, chance for three. Strong play by Shaquille Moore, putting it on the deck, knows how to take it, the crafty moves, shot fake, goes around his defender, finishing in traffic, the tone that Mississippi State wants to get started here at home. Shaquille Moore limited on Tuesday night, he played about 20 minutes in the game against Missouri, asked Chris Jans about that, said... That was tight, had tweaked something in his back. They weren't even sure if he was going to play on Tuesday night. Gave him what they could. Felt much better after treatment the last couple of days. Well, it's good to see him back on the court because this team is going to need some dynamic guard play. Texas A&M, some of the better guards, not just in this league, but in the country. If Mississippi State can have some guard play from the outside, it's definitely going to help their case to get a win. Tyrese Boots, Radford gives it off to Dennis. Dennis guarded tightly by Moore in the corner. And a push and a foul on Tolu Smith, and that is not where Tolu Smith wants to pick up his first foul. Absolutely not. A little too aggressive there on the post defense. You know, Mississippi State's not going to do anything gimmicky on the defensive end. They man you up as Tolu Smith got a little bit of a hook and a shove on the low back. Has to make sure to play after he's done his work, pushed him off the block, play with your body. Radford short with the three. Texas A&M 0-2 from behind the arc. Moore dumps it down low. Tough pass to handle, and Smith couldn't corral it. That's a turnover for the Bulldogs. Good defensive possession there by Texas A&M. They're going to make sure they're showing Tolu Smith a lot of bodies, making it crowded up for him every time he's catching on the pass. Wade Taylor catches, fires, and drains it. Wade Taylor says ice water in the veins. He has been on fire for the Aggies. And he definitely has that a confident guard as he was able to come off that Teeing up that three-pointer from the outside, continuing to keep his momentum going. Smith dumps it off. Matthews cutting. Moore, open three from the wing. Dead center. Shaquille Moore answering the bell. Beautiful inside-out basketball by Mississippi State. Good interior pass and find an open shooter and knocked it down with the speed set. by Jeffries. Another three for Taylor. He is feeling it. Yes, he is. I'm telling you, when you're in a rhythm like that, it's like throwing a beach ball in the ocean. And that's what Wade Taylor before is seeing right now when he's shooting this ball. Wade Taylor leads Texas A&M in points, steals, and assists. The last player to lead in all three of those categories for the Aggies. Pretty good one for Texas A&M. A.C. Long. 
The ball foul. Count the basket for Mississippi State. Cam Matthews headed to the line. Beautiful execution on that last possession by Mississippi State. Texas A&M is making sure to show a lot of bodies to Tolu Smith on the low block. He's doing a phenomenal job catching it, spotting the defenders. Cameron Matthews diving down from the high post with a low post, the high post feed, finishing it in traffic for the end one. That foul was on Wade Taylor, his first. Cam Matthews from the free throw line, 73% this year. Matthews had nine in the loss to Missouri, an overtime loss on Tuesday night. Mississippi State will substitute for the first time today. Will McNair, fifth-year senior, into the game, replacing Tolu Smith. A little bonus break with a media timeout coming up. With the physicality of Will McNair, you don't lose too much when he checks into the game a lot of times in the offensive end as uh, Texas A&M was able to do a really good job offensively, taking advantage of that with a beautiful feed. Taylor gets the assist on the baseline cut to Coleman. D.J. Jeffries. Eric Reed also in. That's number 11 for Mississippi State. Tough shot. That foul's going to go on Radford, and that will take us to... Our first media timeout. Mississippi State, stakes are high. Bulldogs lead it early. We do that. Feel the double team and find the open man. Does that force A&M to change what they're doing defensively? Well, not necessarily. This is what Texas A&M does. They're a really good defensive team with a lot of strong interior play. They do have to respect Tolu Smith because that's the strategy of taking away what Mississippi State does. But Texas A&M, a very strong team. They trust their interior guys, and they will continue to play man up one-on-one uh, -on -one against the defenders, against the offensive players. Gilmore, 73% from the line, makes one of two. That gives the Bulldogs a four-point lead. These two teams hot as of late. Not just in terms of, like, over the last few weeks, like over the last few minutes. A&M has made its last three shots. Mississippi State has made its last four. Taylor dumps it off. Julius Marble, no whistle. Physical play there. And Marble gets the bucket. Julius Marble coming off of a big game. 21 points. That was a career high in the win against Tennessee. Keeping it going as they run that beautiful action. Wade Taylor coming off that curl and dropping that pocket pass off to Marble on the baseline. Good balance, playing off two feet. Knock down the soft jumper. Soft you, jump hook. You okay with the no call down there? I'm okay with it. You know, it's it's early on in this game. This is going to be a physical game. Uh, both of these teams at this point in the season... They're going to have to play physically and play tough, and you want to see them out on the floor. Shaquille Moore off to a fast start for Mississippi State. He's got nine of the Bulldogs, 14 points so far. Marble doubled. Matthews got a hand on it. McNair trying to save it. A&M basketball with 12 on the shot clock. Phenomenal hustle there by McNair. Coming over on that baseline trap, making sure that he came over and tried to make a steal. But on the other end, Shaquille Moore getting in his bag mid-range. Jay, knock you down. Shot clock winding down. Guarded by Reed, gets to an open spot on the wing. Outside rebound to Moore. Gil Moore averaging 9.1 points per game. Reed, got the three. Eric Reed, first team all Ohio Valley Conference player a year ago, averaging just four and a half a game. Big three. Huge three. Doing a really good job of reading the defense. And the ball goes in the interior. Texas A&M is coming over, showing up a defender in the weak side, showing up for the double team on the baseline. Mississippi State's doing a really good job of recognizing. Here's the interior pass as Wade Forth is coming over. Wade Taylor the Forth is coming over to show the trap. Mississippi State's finding an open man. Other end of the floor, Radford pushing the issue. And after the three, Eric Reed was called for a foul. Boots Radford. At the free throw line, 78% on the year. 
Texas A&M shoots more free throws than anybody in the country, and they make more free throws than anybody in the country. And their guards are very, very savvy. Boots Rathman, when he gets into the paint, he looks for the contact. He's such a strong body player that when he draws the contact, you fill him. And he makes you pay if he gets the foul call by going for strikes. A quarter of Texas A&M points this year. 25% come from the free throw line. That's also the highest percentage of points in the free throw line in the country. Five point game. Tony Smith getting an extended rest. Matthews inside to McNair. And McNair can't get it to go, but a follow by Matthews. Strong follow up by Cameron Matthews crashing the offensive glass. Saw he had a mismatch. Andre Gordon left alone on the wing and he missed the three. I mean, as wide open a look as you'll get. Mississippi State in transition on the drive at the bucket. Sean Jones. Great job in transition on the counterattack. Sean Jones running his lane. Beautiful finish. Radford looking to quiet the crowd. Turned it out front by Jones. Henry Coleman. Nice body adjustment. Couple of buckets now for Henry, Henry Coleman. Makes it a seven-point game. Yes, it was. They went middle pick and roll. Able to drop it back to Henry Coleman. Nice double clutch on the layup. Phenomenal. There had it knocked away by the former Mississippi State Bulldog, Anderson Garcia, who has been a spark plug for Texas A&M this year. You can see he's ready as he's checked in. A couple of deflections there on the defensive end. That's how you want to set the tone when you check into the game, trying to get things going, feel yourself on the game. Make a defensive stand, see if you can come up with a steal or something, get the team going. Tolu Smith back in from Mississippi State, along with Deshaun Davis and Tyler Stevenson for the first time today. Davis, he traveled, got the ball stuck on his hip. Mississippi State has made eight of its first ten shots, including two threes, and they've got six assists on those eight made field goals so far. We thought this was going to be a defensive struggle. It still could be, but you know they're doing an excellent job of reading the defense. They're making sure that they're moving the ball around uh, against Texas A&M defense and finding the open man. It sounds like a simple concept, but when you talk about the defenders that Texas A&M has, as you see they're jumping in a little bit of a three-quarter court press here, uh, it can be a little bit more difficult with the activity in which they play with. State breaks the press. Sport pass. Shot clock at five. Davis on the drive, throws a lob, trying to get it to Stevenson. Touch last by AM, but Mississippi State will have the basketball with one second to shoot when we come back from this timeout. Bulldogs up seven over the developing is his interior passing. You have to be able to see the skip pass, the cutter from the high post, and the shooters on the perimeter. If you can do that, then you're able to keep the defense at bay. One on the shot clock for Mississippi State coming out of the timeout. Got to catch and shoot or throw a lob. Comes in. There's the catch. There's the shot. It's an air ball. That's a shot clock violation. Good defense there by Texas A&M. Active hands on the ball. Passer. Third turnover for Mississippi State. The A&M's turned it over twice today. It's Radford on the drive. And Tony Smith ripped down the rebound in traffic. Smith dumps it off. Foul at the rim. The foul's going to go against Garcia as Tyler Stevenson on the cut as free throws coming. 
It's a beautiful play by Tolu Smith. You see the big man putting it on the deck and having the awareness to stop dropping it off before the charge was taken. Getting his teammate an opportunity to finish the basket, draws the foul, going to the line. Stevenson has hit 20 of 26 on the year, makes the first. He's a transfer from Southern Miss, Mississippi native from just down the road in Columbus. Played high school basketball at New Hope, went to Southern Miss where he started 74 of his 99 career games. And averaging four points a game this year for Mississippi State. Anderson Garcia, who made his first three of the season against Tennessee, drives it in and takes it off the glass. Good move there by Garcia, a lot of patience. Mississippi State trying to send down pick and roll, sending them to the side. Texas A&M did a good job reading that, making the adjustment. Individual play by Garcia. Interesting note about Anderson Garcia, his career high, 14 points while at Mississippi State against Texas A&M. Deshaun Davis, hand in the face. Smith tries to tap it around. Two on one ahead to Dennis. Strong finish at the rim for Dexter Dennis. My goodness. Dexter Dennis out in transition. Throwing it down. I could do that one time in my life. <laughs> Just once. This is always the seven-foot rim. Davis trying to force it down low to Tolo Smith. Knocked away by Radford. Bulldogs will keep it. Dennis Davis getting out on the lane, throwing down the hammer. After going 8 of 10 to start the game, Mississippi State has missed his last couple of shots. They've only got two field goal attempts in the last 306. Stevenson. Five on the shot clock. Good drive, good touch there for DJ Jeffries for the elbow. Beautiful move, stopping right in front of the defender. The teardrop floater. And Mississippi State is going to have to need some production, conduction there from uh, DJ Jeffries. He's a really talented player. If he can come into his own in this game, it'll be what they will need. For Dennis. A separation. He's off of the three. What a guard rebound there for Mississippi State. Nashawn Davis comes away with it. A little more thought about it. Dumps it down to Tolu Smith instead. Makes his way through the double, then kicks it out. Four. Jeffries. See it digs out the rebound. Hands wanted a foul there. All fake from Dennis. Missed the open look though from 10 feet. That one though touched last by Mississippi State. So the Aggies will keep it on the offensive end. And Solomon Washington and Peyton Hefner and Wade Taylor come back in. Tolu Smooth getting trapped. Texas and M doing a really good job. Strong bodies, showing their verticality. And what, didn't get the whistle because they kind of stayed planted there? I believe so. I think a lot of the fans might have seen that Marble might have brought his hand down for a split second. But this is going to be a physical game. You understand that you're going on the double team. You're going to have to do a good job of selling it if you get an opportunity to get hit. Julius Marble goes at Cam Matthews, overshoots everything. Matt Moore, he's quick up the floor. And a turnover. Never went out of bounds. Aiden Hefner. Taylor from deep. Oh, and he got another one. Wow. Goodness gracious. The confidence, the swagger. Wade Taylor to four, sizing his man up, knocking one down from deep. Over the last five games, that was coming into today, Wade Taylor, 48.5% from behind the arc. Today, three of three from deep. Jeffries on the cut. He's fouled all the way to the rim. 
Wade Taylor has been on an absolute heater. Last five games, 22 points, 48 from the outside. It's just tough. Jay Jeffries with the free throw. Three points for Jeffries. Jay started his career at Memphis. He's from Olive Branch, which is in the northwest corner of Mississippi and DeSoto County. Former conquistador. Goes to the University of Memphis. Transfers out. Has shown flashes of just brilliance for Mississippi State, but consistency has been lacking. Well, he definitely has the physical tools. He can move, play, guard multiple positions, the physical strength. When he can put it together, one of the better players in this league. Hefner with the turnover. Holy Smith double. A push off on uh, DJ Jeffries. It's his first foul. Jeffries has to be a little more decisive when you catch the ball. You're open, you got a wide open three, or go ahead and make your decision and put it on the deck. Good defense there, Texas AM. Fans didn't like that one, but that was that was forearm in the chest with a little extension there. Well, you know, when you when you're struggling to shoot from outside, you have to do certain things to get yourself going. And a lot of times you have to catch the ball on the move. Oh, yes, yeah, you hold you have your momentum going. You hesitate a little bit, it becomes a little bit more challenging to make the defense move, and they size you up. And it's harder and harder to hit shots. Solomon Washington went to the deck there, but lost the handle. It was called for a travel, so that's a turnover from Texas AM. They do a lot of basketball shoot-arounds for a lot of different teams, SEC and otherwise. Buzz Williams, Texas A&M Aggies do it a little bit different. And it's especially interesting when there's a relatively early tip. They were in the gym at 7 this morning, and they have a drill, Just I think more to just kind of wake up, where it's they roll a ball and you have to go dive on the floor just to stop it. It definitely was fun to watch. The energy was definitely on high this morning. Activity all around. The coaches totally involved. To see that at 7 a.m., you see why this is the hottest team in the Southeastern Conference. I was still looking for coffee at that point. <laughs> Henry Coleman into the game for Marble. Keep an eye on Tolu Smith. Missouri did a really good job denying him the basketball on Tuesday night. He has only one shot attempt so far today. It came a minute into the game. Well, as I mentioned, you have to understand when you have to pick and choose when you're going to go. And when you're a quality interior player like Tolu Smith, you have to make sure that you find the open guy. But as you want to continue to give your team some balance, you're going to have to take some shots against the double team using your counters. And Matthew ripped that rebound away from Solomon Washington. There's a shot attempt from Tolu Smith. He's headed to the line. And that's a good way to get yourself a freed up look. If you get in, out and run in transition, if you can be the first man down the court, seal your man early before the defense is able to set up shop, then you can get that one-on-one -on -one opportunity. He did just that on the last possession. Finds himself at the free throw line. Only a few games remain in the regular season, and they are all important. Wednesday at 7 Eastern, Oscar Sheeble in Kentucky. Host Vanderbilt at Rough Arena. Then it's Kobe Brown in Missouri down at Baton Rouge to take on LSU at the Maravich Center. Both games here on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. LSU picking up a big win over a five-win streak in a row Vanderbilt Commodore team. K.J. Williams with 35 points and 10 rebounds in that performance. He was a monster. Yes, he was. Well, that was a tough loss for a Vanderbilt team who had kind of entered the conversation in terms of the postseason. That loss did not help their cause. Vanderbilt will be playing the SEC tournament in their home city. Deshaun Davis, no, but Tolu Smith with the follow. Great follow back by Tolu Smith, active on the offensive glass. When you know that the team is going to be double teaming, you have to utilize other ways to be effective to put points on the scoreboard. Taylor dumps it off. Anderson Garcia, ball fake, then a foul. 
Great execution there by Texas and AM, dropping it off to Anderson Garcia. But on the other end, Tolu Smith getting on the offensive glass. Something you have to have in your game. You understand it's frustrating. You feel the double teams, the traps coming all game long. You know you want to get some points on the board to help your team. Multiple ways of doing that. Get out in transition. Run down the court early. Beat your defender. Get fouled and get to the free throw line and give yourself an opportunity for points. Or more importantly for your team, getting on the offensive glass to put pressure on the defense. I have... An incredibly obscure stat for you about Texas A&M. Anderson Garcia now with four points in the game. Texas A&M is 13 and one this year when Anderson Garcia scores three or more points. Well, I tell you, we'll, for, we'll see if that trend holds. And for the Aggies, they better start feeding Garcia. Keep the trend going. He's done his part. He, he's got his four. Five minutes left in this first half. Shaquille Moore dumps it down low to Tolu Smith. Good ball movement for Mississippi State. Everything but the finish, and Garcia ends up with a long rebound. Garcia going to try a three, and he got the three. Wow. Feeling it. Beautiful set as they came off the middle pick and roll. Garcia did something a little interesting, set that ball screen with his back to the ball handler. Didn't have to shape up. Feet already set. Knocked down the trade. Prior to Tuesday night, Anderson Garcia was 0 of 4 on the season from beyond the arc. He's now made a three in each of the last two games. He's got seven points today. And we've got a one-point game. Well, listen, he has some familiarity with this gym, as you mentioned, transferring to Texas A&M. He has a little bit of something to play for, and he's doing that right now. He gets another chance. Should have had a follow there from Smith. He gets a one-on-one -on -one spin move. Goes up against Anderson Garcia and one. Strong move by Tolu Smith. Missed the easy putback, but he demands the ball down low. Drop step and one. Beautiful basket there by Tolu Smith. So because of the offensive rebound, is that why you didn't have the double team there? Well, you know, when you're a player like him and you, you, you're so accustomed to being so efficient in shooting at a higher percentage. It bothers players like that to miss easy ones. And it's something that gets inside you when you get another crack at it. Texas A&M was in single coverage, only guarding with one player, didn't send the trap. You feel that you have an opportunity to take advantage of that situation, and he did just that. Inside four minutes, Mississippi State back to a four-point lead. Bulldogs with seven second chance points today. It's Radford. Garcia thought about another one. Taylor had it blocked by Jeffries. Garcia digs it out, and he gets another bucket. How about nine points for Anderson Garcia? Garcia doing all of the dirty work, getting on the offensive glass, pulling tough rebounds. As we mentioned, we know this is a big-time game, and you're going to need all-around production from your team. Anderson Garcia doing more than his part. Defense making sure to keep it in tight. Deep three from Jeffries off the mark. That was with the clock winding down. That was a defensive win right there for Texas A&M. At one point, almost all ten players inside the three-point line. If you're Mississippi State, you have to run some screens, get a little bit of motion going, free up some players, move the ball, and move some men. Taylor dumps it to Henry Coleman, and he turns it over. He was trying to feed it with a high pass to Garcia. Out on the same page there. Two-point game in Starkville. 2.45 left in the first half. Adjustment the teams are going to have to make is going to be on Wade Taylor. Knocking down from the outside. Still seems a little bit poised, but you have to look for him to turn it on here in a little bit. It's kind of hard to defend when a guy just decides that 26, 27 feet is his range. Well, he's a crafty player. Very intelligent and heady, plays at his own pace, always on balance. So when you're playing against a player like that, it's hard to press up in him because he can draw fouls. He can hook you, he can bump into you, he can sell it to the official, and he can shoot the free throw at such a very good clip. So it's pick your poison, hope he's off from the outside shot, 
He's been knocking them down early. Shaquille Moore. It's two missed from deep on that possession. Eric Reed made his first three of the game. He's had two good looks since then and has missed them both. Yeah, and that's the one you got to knock down. Texas A&M coming out of the break, showing a little bit of zone. When you get some clean looks in a game of this magnitude, understanding that you're trying to get into the NCAA tournament, that's when you have to rise up, set your feet, rise up, and knock it down with confidence. And over there, Taylor with a rare turnover, trying to get it into Julius Marble. There's the lob. No, Moore got it, and he's got trees around him. McNair. Shaquille Moore. Notice the defense. All the five of the defenders inside the three-point lane, almost daring Mississippi State to line up one of those outside shots. They're not letting let you get a piece of the paint. Jeffries had it spin out. Grabs the miss, and then he is fouled on the floor before the shot. It's going to be a grind-out offensive struggle for Mississippi State, something they've had going all season, quite frankly. When you get an opportunity to get it in there, pound it, get an offensive rebound, try to give your team a second-chance shot at it, it's the best opportunity for a high-percentage shot for the Bulldogs. That was the eighth foul on Texas A&M, so a one-and-one one here for D.J. Jeffries. Three points so far today, one of those coming from the line. Mississippi State as a team, 6 of 11. <laughs> Offensive rebound there by Shaquille Moore. Jeffries, three from the corner. No. Mississippi State made its first two threes of the game. They are since 0 for 10. You have to understand, even though you make your first two, don't fall into the fool's goal situation. You have to know who you are. Continue to run your offense. Continue to pound, pound, pound. Pass the ball. Move it around. Find the highest quality, highest percentage of shot, which is particularly going to be in the paint. Sean Davis with another steal there. He's got a couple today, which is his average. Turnover there. Or Mississippi State. Bulldogs have missed eight of their last nine shots. Talked about the, the 0 for 10 after the 2 for 2 start for deep from deep. Chris Jans told us maybe worst thing that could have happened the other night was against Missouri. They made six first half threes against Missouri, finished the first half six of 15, but then they were one of 13 the rest of the way. Well, that's what happens. You start to think that you're making them. But unfortunately, your identity is not to be a three-point shooting team. Now, credit to Texas A&M. And Chris Jans looks on. Neither of these teams has scored in the last three minutes. Buzz Williams took a timeout. They might try to go quickly off the set for a two-for-one two for situation. You don't see that a ton in college basketball, which is, is surprising that you don't. getting deep down to five Bradford off the screen down to two gets to the line knocked out of bounds that's a shot clock violation great a good defensive possession for Mississippi State yes and that's a statement stop that they needed Buzz Williams in Texas a &M had an opportunity coming out of that timeout to dial something up you would think they would go quickly in that particular situation trying to find an easy basket Mississippi State did a phenomenal job getting out of their action, forcing them to a long set. Now they have 14.9 seconds to go in the half to hold the ball for the last shot and extend their lead. Texas A&M turns it over 12 times a game. They've turned it over nine times in the first half. Chance for the last shot for Mississippi State. Down to five from the corner. Shaq Moore, three on the way. No, tipped up. No. And we will go to the half with Mississippi State leading it by two. Bulldogs. 15 and 3 this season when leading at the half. Will they get win number six? Shot defensively, physically, some of the more impressive players in the Southeastern Conference, and they sit down and physically make it difficult on you with this some tough man to man defense. Also forced Texas AM into eight turnovers, had five steals and three blocks in that first half. Talking about Mississippi State's defense. Changing up from the man to man defense, showing a little bit of the zone coming out of the break. Texas A&M turns it over, first possession. Here's Shaq Moore. He turns it over, has it, well, nearly turns it over. And a timeout. 
DJ Jeffries was trying to get a timeout. He caught it, kind of slid on his back. Guess never fully had possession. We'll put an asterisk next to that timeout if Mississippi State perhaps needs one late. I think we also got to watch the rest of this possession. You got to pay it off, right? You, you burned a timeout. You better get points out of it. You better. I mean, it's one of those situations. A lot of times when you're a head coach, it's hustle. You want your players to play, but when they call a timeout and burn one that you have, oh, man, it takes a lot of the control or the situation from you in the tactical moments that you need to draw one up. DJ Jeffries gives it to Togo Smith. Shot clock is at three. Cross court pass. Deshaun Davis, three on the way. No. So Mississippi State does not pay the time off, out off the points. Inside, Julius Marble lost the handle. It was touched last, though, by Mississippi State. Marble to Michael Roberts, our official underneath the basket. Marble coming in, trying to establish deep position. Good rotation, Mississippi State. That might have been off the fingertips of Marble. From the corner, Dexter Dennis got a three and a foul. That's some beautiful action on the baseline out of bounds. And the catch a screen in the ball as you catch a screen in the corner. Good screen there. Tony Smith late fouling the jump shooter. First lead of the game for Texas A&M. And Dexter Dennis trying to finish the four-point play, but he missed the free throw. Look at the fact that Texas A&M shoots more free throws than anybody else in the country. They make more. That's only the fifth free throw attempt of the game. They average 25 and a half free throw attempts per contest. That foul is on Wade Taylor. Tim Matthews got him in kind of a tough defensive position that forced him to grab it. Well, anytime you're guarding Cam Matthews, physically you're in a tough position. Giving up size and strength, Wade Taylor is. Uh, drawing the foul, but Mississippi State when they're drawing the fouls, they're going to have to punish Texas a and at the free throw line They're not knocking down things on the outside not moving the defense as you can say Texas a and is daring them to shoot it from the outside Packing all five defenders inside the paint. There's one on Julius Marble. That is his third It was a one-on-one -on -one situation there that Tolu Smith Got into a really good position posting up through the foul and Texas A&M is going to make a change. Anderson Garcia comes into a chorus of booze simply because he changed the dresses. <laughs> and Julius Marble goes to the bench. It's, it's good to see some of the crowd a little bit, to have some passion. And this now in this age with the transfer portal, you have so many players who change teams so often that it's hard to develop some type of allegiance and chemistry with the long fan base. Jack Moore got the roll. He held the pose, and I think it maybe was more hope than anything else. Finally, though, the Bulldogs get another three to fall. I'm going to tell you, they're going to need a couple more. They need the breathing room that that's going to allow. If they can get the outside going, then it opens up things from the inside. It'll have to be in the opposite for them because Texas A&M is sagging in, not allowing them to play from the inside out. Smith trying to feed it through traffic to Cam Matthews. He got a great idea there. State fortunate to keep it. Here was the Shaquille Moore three. Good ball movement, swinging it around the horn. Shaquille Moore with the friendly roll, knocks it down. into the double team, gives it off, left-handed floater, no, and A&M runs it down, Dexter Dennis with the board. You know, this game has a mid-2000s, early 2000s feel to it. When you look and you're seeing eight players inside the paint, inside the three-point line, pounded it, long possessions, players shooting it with under 10 on the shot clock. This is a grind. Wade Taylor... A little bit of a shot, sold it, and got the call. And there's an example of what I'm talking about with Wade Taylor before, how he makes it difficult on defenders because if you crowd up into him, he understands when he takes the hit, look at that, just a little boom right there. He takes it, drop to the deck. 
and he gets to the free throw line many times because he understands if he gets bumped, he's going to sell it. So as a defender, it puts you in limbo because you have to be off him a little bit, but you also need to have pressure because he can shoot. Henry Coleman with the bucket. He's got six. The last foul was on Moore. The Academy Award goes to Taylor. And another now an offensive foul on DJ Jeffries. Another, I'm, I'm telling you, Way Taylor, savvy player. If he feels a forearm on you, he's going to let you know. As you can see, Jeffries feels the forearm, oh, wow. extends it just a nudge, but that's all Taylor needs to sell that little bump right there, take the foul, softens up the team. Now Taylor steps back, knocks out a three, and he's really going to hear it from the crowd now. And that's his game. He softens you up. He lulls you to sleep, plays on balance, and then when he gets the space that he wants, he makes you pay. Wade Taylor, four of five from behind the arc, 12 points. It's tied to the lead in the game with Shaq Moore from Mississippi State. Sean Davis, and in by three. It's a kickball. on the shot clock for Mississippi State. Texas a &M showing a little bit of trap on some ball screens. Those are an opportunity when you bring the big out. Mississippi State has to have a quick hitter to play in that pocket pass, making Texas A&M scramble to find a clean shot. Tolu Smith on the interior has had a little on him. Not that time. That's what you want to do if you're Tolu Smith. They're coming off that floppy set. They decide to switch it. Wade Taylor is guarding you on the interior. They missed you, but you continue to work, carve out your space, and then you knock it down, make them pay. Anderson Garcia missed it, tipped it in himself. Garcia now has 13. Texas A&M leads by three. Activity by Anderson Garcia getting on the offensive glass. A poor box out, box out by Mississippi State. Not finding the offensive players and putting the body on them. Must do a better job. That's off a rare miss from Wade Taylor. the corner no tough shot from mississippi state momentum's falling back in the corner they come swing off the pick and roll you get freed up got to get there quicker in the corner get your feet set step into your shot knock it down taylor steps into one he's missed two in a row now from deep but a long rebound here's dexter dennis and count the basket a foul underneath <laughs> Counting the basket on the box out, but credit that three-point shot to Anderson Garcia. And the biggest reason, that's a good trade-off for Garcia, but he's on the offensive glass. If you're Mississippi State, you have to understand what Anderson Garcia brings to this team. Put a body on him in a game of low possessions like this. It's going to be a grind out. You can't allow a team to get a second crack at it by missing a block out assignment. That is a whistle and it's a foul on Texas A&M. And a good call there by the officials. Texas A&M coming out of the break with a little bit of a zone trap. Missed cue on the pass, but he was able to touch him on the hand. A little bit of a late call, but a good call there by the officials. Three on Solomon Washington now. So both Garcia and Washington. Actually, Julius Marble also with three fouls for Texas A&M. Now, Texas A&M is switching a lot of these screens when they're coming out of the floppy set. When they come off of that, Tolu Smith has a guard on him in the interior. Mississippi State's got to look to go inside immediately off of that first floppy set when Coleman switches out to the guard on the perimeter. Shot clock was down to three. Wade Taylor gambled for a steal. He got it, and then there was a foul on Shaquille Moore. Fouls starting to pile up. One of the things that we wanted to watch coming into this one today, Richard, was we talked about Texas A&M shoots a bunch of free throws, they make a bunch of free throws, but Mississippi State fouls less than any team in the SEC. They average only 15 fouls per game. 
Well, you know, they're, they're really good athletically. And when you can move your feet and guard and stay in front of your man uh, offensively, you know, you're able to keep teams out of the paint. When teams get you in, get a piece of the paint, kick it out, get you playing off rotation, that's when you're some more susceptible to pick up foul calls. Mississippi State does a really good job of keeping men in front of them. Mississippi State committed four fouls in the first half. They've committed four here in the second half. That was Texas A&M's fifth foul. Buzz Williams clapped for that one, though, because a hustle foul. Radford trying to come up with a steal. Now we've got an offensive foul on Mississippi State. Joe Lindsay, our lead referee, walked over before the start of the second half. And I said to him, I think Gaines had a nice flow to it. He agreed. Not a lot of flow right now. No, it definitely changed the rhythm up a little bit as Henry Coleman changed up the, the rhythm, stepping in and taking a beautiful charge. Three good. That's Andre Gordon. Gordon, a fourth-year player at Texas A&M. That's just his seventh made three of the season. And Mississippi State takes a timeout. Texas A&M has flipped the script in this game. Bulldogs have led by as much as nine. Now Texas A&M with their big... Only one timeout remaining in the entire ball game to make any adjustments. This is a critical situation and a turning point right here for Mississippi State. They're going to have to make the adjustments. You're going to have to dial up something here on this half-court situation. Get a bucket. Settle down on the defensive end to try to get yourself back in the ball game because Texas A&M has figured it out. Sean Davis knocks down a mid-range jumper off of the screen. And the Bulldogs look for a stop. Texas A&M chasing their 14th win in SEC play. Be the only the, the second time in any conference that the Aggies have won 14 in the league. Tolu Smith with the clutch. Great transition by Mississippi State. The steal, getting out and running. Everybody running their lanes, dropping it off to the big fella. Tolu, Tolu Smith with the hat. Now nine in back-to-back -back buckets for the Bulldogs. Radford on the drive, draws the contact, and free throws are coming for Boots Radford. Tyrese Radford. Calming the crowd down as Mississippi State turning defense in the offense, getting off and running. Everybody's running their lane, lane, drop it off to the big guy, slamming it home. Quiet day for Radford. He's got only two points. They've come from the free throw line. How about a guy with 10 straight double figure scoring game? Well, you know, he and Wade Taylor, the fourth, are such a dynamic backcourt. They're interchangeable, but in some ways they draw a lot of fouls, but they do it in a different way, as we saw Wade Taylor the fourth doing it in a savvy way. If you get your weight on him, he's going to take the fall. He's going to make sure to sell it and, and, and figure out a way to soften you up. Radford, on the other hand, he makes you feel it. When he comes into the paint, he gets his body on you, and he's opportunity to be a three-point uh, and one threat when he gets into the paint. Radford makes both free throws. 78% on the year. Davis on the drive, into the corner. Three on the way. That's an offensive rebound. D.J. Jeffries cleaning up the mess down low. Good effort there by D.J. Jeffries. Beautiful design play by Mississippi State with a lot of patience. Got to knock down that open three-pointer. But if you can't do it, crash the offensive glass. D.J. Jeffries doing just that. Andre Gordon off the screen. Shoots an air ball. Grabbed by Jeffries. for another one of these long sets from Mississippi State. McNair doubled into the corner. Shot clock down to five. Jeffries going the wrong way on the drive. And that's a blocking foul on Texas A&M. 
Solomon Washington called for his fourth foul. And we've got free throws, but first, a timeout. Texas A&M leads it by five. And I would think they would have to win. you got two players on the team playing in SEC, I would think you have a good opportunity to win the state championship on the high school level. A couple of dudes, huh? <laughs> Definitely so. My goodness. Probably had to be fun to watch. DJ Jeffries has five points today. Just one of three from the free throw line. Thousand point scorer for his career at Mississippi State. Career that began at Memphis and, and here in Starkville. Three point game. This is a good response by Mississippi State coming out of that timeout that they had earlier in the game. Now, after cutting into this deficit, we'll see what type of adjustments they have made, understanding that. Texas A&M has settled down and going to make some adjustments themselves. In the post for Marble. Coleman trying to pull down the offensive rebound. Couldn't hang on. And the Bulldogs get a defensive stop there. Watch out there. Ball hitting the camera right in our face. Into your living room. <laughs> Tolu Smith on the bench right now for Mississippi State. He's got three fouls. Once again, Texas A&M keeping that paint packed. Showing bodies and hands. Matthews in a tough spot. Gets it off to Reed. Reverse layup is good. Wow. Reed going for the reverse. Aaron Reed Jr. Beautiful with the left hand. The crowd is on their feet. Taylor trying to quiet the crowd. Can't do it. Mississippi State digs it out. Bulldogs in transition. Jeffries that's the slam on the brakes. And Mississippi State with a little more patient set. Good decision by Mississippi State. You seem like you have the advantage, but you can't fall for that in this game. Deshaun Davis gives the Bulldogs the lead once again. Davis rising up with confidence, getting in his bag with the crossover, creating a little bit of separation, knocking down the mid-range J. Texas A&M takes a timeout. There was a time when Humphrey Coliseum was one of the most difficult places to play in the SEC. Yeah, and they're starting to show it a little bit right now in this run as the crowd is on. But certainly not that high-flying level of success that they sustained for well over a decade. Chris Jans in his first year in Starkville trying to reclaim that. Trying to get Mississippi State back to the NCAA tournament. We well, already coming into today had them as the last team in the field. A win over Texas A&M would certainly help their argument. Now they're on Eric Reed. Another, another drawn foul there by Wade Taylor the fourth. Ran some good action to free him up. They were going to go dribble handoff. Reed trying to muscle up body into the Taylor, selling it at the point of contact. Boom. As you can see right there at the point of contact, Reed trying to fight over that dribble handoff, getting in between the lane. Wade Taylor, as soon as he gets the knock, takes the foul. And so now an 86% free throw shooter at the line for Texas A&M. That snaps an 8-0 run for Mississippi State and ties this game at 47. Taylor now with 13 points. He does it such a controlled, smooth demeanor. You know, you see a little bit of the savvy way that he sees the game. It's almost like a little bit of Chris Paul. It's your gamesmanship within the game. Understanding where you are with your face on the court. Taking advantage of opportunities. Rare miss at the line for Taylor. Texas A&M showing a little zone. Ooh. They saw Davis everything but the finish. Split defenders, little shake and bake. A little too much English on that finger roll. Anderson Garcia had a big game for Texas A&M. 11 points today. Matthews trying to argue that foul call as Marble setting up shop down low with a duck in. 
A lot of action and physicality down low. The referee's trying to clean things up. They're both using their arms. Foul on Cameron Matthews. Quiet day today for Julius Marble. He's got just two points in the game and no rebounds. And that's coming off a monster night. He had 21 points in the win against Tennessee to go with nine rebounds. Definitely struggling. Try the opportunity with a duck in and drew a foul. You'd like to see to get yourself going with the free throw, get an easy one. But this is a tough game. The possessions are not going to be easy. You have to grind it out. Reach in. That is on Luke Radford. And so Mississippi State now with a one and one situation. Every the feeling we're going to see a lot of free throws in the last 921. And every one of them is going to be critical for Mississippi State. Without having the ability to space things out and knock down outside shots, you got to make your free throws. The season advantage is overwhelmingly for Texas A&M. They shoot 76% from the line. Mississippi State 64% from the line. Yeah, a lot of it with Mississippi State, Tolu Smith drawing so many fouls. Not a good free throw shooter. Plays a role into that team percentage. But you have to understand with the game of this magnitude, so many games that Mississippi State could have won if they were able to knock down their free throws. You have to rise up, try focus, get it done today. Bulldogs have been better at the free throw line as of late. 10 of 16 today. And Mississippi State in front by two, 49-47. Bulldogs have not made a shot in almost five minutes. I'm sorry, Texas A&M has not made a shot in almost five minutes, not Mississippi State. Marble gets it to Garcia. Trying to draw the foul, left it short. The drought continues for the Aggies as Shaq Moore works against Wade Taylor. Look at the activity there by Wade Taylor. Anytime the ball is in his vicinity, it's in jeopardy. Again, you see the pace of Mississippi State. They are content to play this game in the 50s, low 60s. Shot clock down to five. E.J. Jeffries, step back three. No. Cam Matthews with an offensive board. And they should. You need to run long sets. In a situation like this, when you give more possession to Texas A&M, they can go on a run on you with back-to-back -back trays, and the game can be out of reach. Jeffries on the baseline drive, and he turned it over. an example right there that in the game of this magnitude for Mississippi State when you're struggling to find offensive scoring and you're going to lean on your defense a turnover where you can go back and set up your defense when it goes out of bounds they got to inbound it is better than a situation where you turn it over and they can obviously get an easy layup uh, you go back to the timeout situation you have to be able to give yourself possession set the defense and it ripped away by McNair. Good defensive play there by Will McNair, Jr. We asked Chris Jans today about style, and he said, honestly, I don't care. The style he likes is playing good defense, but in terms of what they do offensively, he said, I don't care. I just want to win. That's right. He did say, he said, I just want to win, and I definitely can understand the competitive nature. You know, when you're a coach and you know you have a team that's struggling to hit shots from the outside, you're trying to do everything you possibly can with your staff to figure out how to get clean looks for your team, how to develop a better shooting rhythm, how to create space where they can do things to their strength. That's the challenge that he has. Jeffries all alone, missed the three. And Hefner pulls down a rebound for the second consecutive trip. Wade Taylor draws the foul. Foul goes on Shaquille Moore, and it takes us to an official's timeout. Free throws coming up for Wade Taylor. Aggies trail it by to play in the game. And Wade Taylor is at the free throw line. A couple of free throws coming out of this timeout. 
14 points now today for Wade Taylor. Twentieth double-digit scoring game of the season for Taylor. Sophomore spins that one home, makes it both, and they're knotted at 49. Texas A&M coming out showing a little bit of half-court zone pressure. Davis, who touched it last. Texas A&M did. It's Mississippi State basketball. Good defense there by Hayden Hefner. Not falling for the fakes, keeping his body high, verticality, forcing a tough shot. Mississippi State with another crack out of here. 11 seconds to go in the shot clock, 6.42 to go in the game. They're going to have to dial up something on this possession. Bradford back in for A&M. Shot clock now under 10. Davis gets the screen from Moore. Not a lot there. Pull up three. Well off the mark. He missed the rim by three feet. It's saved in, and now Texas A&M gets it. Near steal there by Jones. Good job using his inside hand. Had the opportunity to get that steal. Texas A&M has not made a field goal in eight minutes. Dexter Dennis trying to change that. He cannot. There's a whistle underneath, and that is a foul on the Aggies. And so we will walk to the other end of the floor as Anderson Garcia picks up his fourth, and Mississippi State heads to the free throw line. Activity under the boards. Garcia getting away with a little bit of hook there. Picking up his fourth. You want to let that one go if you're Garcia. You mean a lot to your team. You've got a lot of things going offensively. Being a good job on the defensive end. Keeping balls alive. Taking advantage of the time when you get making shots that your team needs. Been a spark plug for the Aggies. Talking about the issues for Tolu Smith at the line. First 25 games of the season, he was a 53% free throw shooter. Figured out something in the last three games. 15 of 17 in the last three. I, I can tell you from experience, you know, it's it's good to see that he's turned it around as free throw shooting, but it can be a lonely place at that line when you're struggling. There's so many things to think about. One of three today. That's his second make for the line. Mainly a psychological thing. What you know, a lot of people will say it's your mechanics, but he has pretty good mechanics, and you can see the touch that he has around the rim, that he understands how to play the game. But you're thinking about so many things when you're struggling from the free throw line. Got them both. Made hey, two big ones at Mizzou Arena on the road late. To help send that game to overtime. Again, that Mississippi State ultimately lost on Tuesday night. And those were two big ones that his team needed right there. You know, you get to a point with the free throw shooting when you're a poor free throw shooter that you just say, hey, forget it. I'm missing them. What's the worst thing that can happen? And when you relax, that's when you end up becoming a better free throw shooter. There's a steal. Sean Jones ahead of the pack with the flush. Wow. Sean Jones taking off. Phenomenal jam. Four-point lead for Mississippi State, and this crowd is alive in Starkville. There's a foul on Moore. And that's not a foul that Chris Jans is going to love. It's 22 feet from the basket going away from the basket. No, it's not. You don't want to pick up a foul like that, but the energy was in the building. They've been playing really good defense. They've held uh, Texas A&M to no field goals in almost nine minutes in the ball game. So you're feeling the pressure. You're trying to keep another steal, and you pick up one. But uh, defensively, this Mississippi State team is locking up. As I mentioned earlier, they have the personnel that they can make sure that they can make the game difficult for everyone. The key is going to be for them as they can continue to rebound, have some good offensive sets, 
and do what it takes to close this game out because it's not going to be easy because Texas A&M has weapons. Extra Dennis down one of three from the line. He's an 80% shooter as Hayden Hefner comes back in. Shaquille Moore went to the bench with four fouls. Five and a half to play. Here's Texas A&M showing a little bit of that three-quarter court pressure. Last time it was token. They got back to the half-court set and they dropped back to a man-to-man. -man. We'll see what they'll do in this set. Jeffrey's guarded by Hefner. Now Matthews working against Washington. The defense by the freshman. Five to shoot. Scoop shot. Wow. A bailout foul. And Matthews did a good job drawing it. For Solomon Washington, that's five. He's done. He did. And, and Solomon Washington, he gave him the angle. Matthews was dead in the water, had nothing to do, didn't have a passer, couldn't cut. But he gave him the angle, giving him a little slip where he was able to slither through and put the ball on the glass. Solomon Washington, the freshman from New Orleans, fouls out with five to play. With his shot, obviously five fouls. He's been playing hard all night. But you pick up a foul there. You give him the angle. You have him dead. Keep your body positioned between the man and the basket. He gave up the position, tried to jump on the top side or on the side of him. Gave Matthews the angle to get it on the board. With an athlete like Matthews, when he gets a shoulder into you, you can easily fall back, drawing a foul. Five points, five rebounds today for Cam Matthews. He scored in double figures in each of the last three games. Stewards were, they, they were waiting to tell Solomon Washington to sit down on the bench after fouling out. And they screamed right as Cam Matthews was about to let that free throw. Very right? interesting situation. Student section not in tune with what's going on in the game, waited for him to have a seat, said it right as their shooter was shooting in a critical moment of the game. Here it is, four minutes, 51 seconds to go, and just previously you got an opportunity to go up by four or five points, and you're making too much noise in the Coliseum. Yeah, and, and I don't know if it really matters other than the fact that it was quiet in the building, and then you get the outburst. Good crowd today at Humphrey Coliseum. They were able to redeem themselves on the first free throw attempt there by Henry Coleman. We'll see what they do on the second one. Texas A&M 10 of 15 from the line, now 11 of 16. Mississippi State is 12 of 20 today. That's 60%. But to this point of the game, the Bulldogs have shot more free throws than Texas A&M, who leads the country in both makes and attempts. Shot over 700 free throws this season. They make sure they're physical. How about that? Sean Jones, a couple of plays in the last two or three minutes where he has shown the athleticism. He did, and he got a lucky roll on the reverse layup. As you could tell, he was powering up, looking like he was going to go for the reverse dunk. The ball slipped off his fingertips, but he was still able to make it. They had some good action there with Mississippi State with a little bit of a high-low feed. As you see, Cam Masters dropping it off. The power-up is going to drop it. Comes off the fingertips and finds the bottom of the cup. And this has turned into a serious drought for Texas A&M. They have not made a shot in 9 minutes and 54 seconds of game action. Wade Taylor gets it in. And they still find themselves down by only four. Radford has it stripped. Trying to come away with a steal, and the Bulldogs do. Ahead. Jeffrey with the slam. Six-point game, four minutes to play. Big momentum swinger, DJ. Your team an opportunity to get a critical road win, to stay in the race in the SEC. A phenomenal performance on his behalf, but 
meaning so much to the team and more so giving Mississippi State a chance for the free throw with G.J. Jeffries coming up short. That one barely grazed the rim by D.J. Jeffries. So A&M finds themselves down six without having made a basket in 10 minutes and 15 seconds. Wade Taylor draws the foul. That goes against D.J. Jeffries. In another situation where Wade Taylor drawing the foul, coming off that into the paint, snaking his way, getting a defender on his hip. If he can get a little piece of the body, he has such a knack for drawing those fouls. Wade Taylor, 16 points today. All four of his makes are from behind the arc. He's a prolific shooter. I mean, if I could shoot over 90% in SEC play from the free throw line, you definitely know you have a weapon. I would get fouled as many times as possible as well. Get a chance to score with the clock stop. Four-point game. Which is, it's almost unbelievable to say this is a four-point game when Texas A&M has gone ten and a half minutes without a made basket. I don't know if I've ever seen that before. And as you mentioned, you're just... Oh, Matthew split defenders, missed the shot. Tolu Smith with the follow and the foul. Now that was a big-time play. Tolu Smith being relentless on the offensive glass, following up after the athletic move by Cam Matthews and... Tolu Smith, relentless, with the left-hand finger roll and one offensive rebound put back. Extra Dennis on the foul. Tolu Smith, 15 points, six rebounds today. And it's a seven-point lead for Mississippi State with 3.25 to play. Ball never touched the ground. From the corner, Radford's three won't go. And a foul on Mississippi State. That's D.J. Jeffries. That was a full-on clear out on the rebound. It was a poor transition defense by the Mississippi State Bulldogs, and Texas A&M did a great job of recognizing that. Inbounding the ball, moving it up the sideline, only by the pass to an open three-point shot. Mississippi State was fortunate that Tyrese Radford wasn't able to knock that one down, but not a sure block out. Julius Marble. Of the starters, he's the worst free throw shooter for Texas A&M at 59%. Just a couple from the line today. That ball movement was impressive. It never touched the floor. Beautiful. It, it reminds you of a game of the old when you're trying to move the ball and score without without dribbling. It's one area where the game has changed so much over the years. You know, with the dynamic play of guards spacing the game out, trying to get a piece of the paint, it's changed the game coming with the pick and roll. You'll see now guards dribbling on a possession, oftentimes 20, maybe even more times where you used to have the objective of trying to work the ball around via the pass. Matthews on the drive, cut off. The defense by Radford. Davis out front, wide open, three, no. And the rebound goes to Dexter Dennis. Strong box out there by Texas A&M. That was off the mark. Wade Taylor couldn't get it to fall. Mississippi State basketball. It's now almost 11 and a half minutes for Texas A&M without a made basket. This has been locked down defense. And, you know, they have the personnel that can do that. Uh, as you mentioned, it's still a six-point ball game. Playing such tremendous defense, but going to have to manufacture something on the offensive end. As I mentioned, the game has changed so much. Everyone now is spacing and trying to get a piece of the paint. It's a change in the way of old when you try to get an inside-out tone set by throwing it in the interior. Mississippi State, without the dynamic guard play, has to play the old-school way. You throw it in the inside and hope that you can play from the inside out. They're taking time off the clock on every possession. Second best defense in the SEC, but the offense looking for a bucket here. Shot clock down to five. Shaq Moore guarded by Taylor on the drive. Off balance. Shot! He got it with the left hand! Huge shot 
just when Mississippi State needs it the most, extending this lead to an eight-point margin, forcing a timeout. 2-0-2 to play, Mississippi State up eight. 34 points in the paint today for the Bulldogs. Yeah, and those two in the paint might be the biggest of the two by Shaq. Take a shot or two or three in the last 2-0-2. I think Mississippi State knows what's on the line, as you mentioned. This is an opportunity for a quad one win. And with the NCAA evaluation tool or net rankings, they give themselves a chance to get this victory, which would get them off of that last four in line and be a significant team in the NCAA tournament. Jack Moore fouls Wade Taylor on the inbound attempt. Moore is lobbying to the official that it was Taylor who kind of gave him an elbow. I think some of the Mississippi State coaching staff may have seen the same thing. That's the fifth foul on Moore. Now you, you saw Taylor kind of throw his arm over the top shoulder to try and create some separation. That's a tough foul for Moore. Very tough. You know, you're trying to do your job, as I mentioned. Wade Taylor is so crafty and heady with the way that he can sell it. He's undersized against many of these physical defenders that Mississippi State has, and when he gets his body into him, he can sell it by throwing his head back and doing certain things. He gets to the free throw line for a reason. Should that foul have gone, gone against Taylor instead of Moore? I would have liked to have seen it to be a no call okay. uh, and let him play on uh, the magnitude of this particular game. 22 feet or 30 feet away from the basket. He's trying to free himself up. You have to understand there's been several calls in this game that uh, Taylor has gotten himself an opportunity to get foul calls. Granted, towards him, it's a skill set, and that's a really good thing on his behalf, and he deserves to get it. But in this game, you know it's going to be physical, and you can't. You got to let that one go. Okay, it breaks the press. Six-point game. It's the first time that Shaq Moore's fouled out of a game this season. We've seen this over and over and over in the second half. Mississippi State taking it deep into the shot clock. Handoff drive. Matthews cut off, and he is fouled, and that is a bailout foul by Texas A&M's Dexter Dennis. It is, and critical free-throw opportunities here for Cam Matthews. He had a couple early on and wasn't able to capitalize on that. He's getting downhill. He's got to be able to get that shot on the board. Bailed out there on the reach in. Nowhere for him to go. Bottled up. Matthews, one of three from the line today. This season, a 73% free throw shooter. And he makes the first. Mississippi State is going to have to earn every one of the free throws from here on out. They lack a money time guard who can hit big shots in an isolation situation. Texas A&M is going to make it hard. If they get into the basket area, they're going to have to foul them and put them on the line and see if Mississippi State can have a free throw stroke. Early this season, Texas A&M had an issue with fouls. They were fouling too much, and they were bad fouls. They've been really good in league play, not fouling when they don't have to. There's a foul on Mississippi State. But today, 20 fouls. It's the third time in SEC play that they've been whistled 20 times. Big collision there. Sean Jones and Wade Taylor both go down. Foul is on Jones, and Taylor's got free throws. Looks like they both might have banged knees in that situation. You give Taylor a, a crease, a crack. He's so good at going angles, and he's balanced. He can go right, he can go left. If you get an opportunity where he can sense that your defense is not squared up, he attacks that angle. If he can take an angle, it's a little bump. And he has an opportunity to sell it to get to the free throw line from the free throw and shoots it at a over 90% clip in SEC play. It's giving away three points. Seven of eight today for Taylor. He affects the game in so many ways. He does, and it, and it puts pressure on the defense because it softens them up and not allowing them to play at that space. As you can see, there's nowhere to go in that corner. He's not going anywhere, but if he can see that he has an angle that he can get in that crack and draw the foul, he's going to take it. But he also has the control that if the referee does not call the foul, he can maintain his dribble and make playmaking opportunities for himself and for the rest of his team. Mississippi State's going to have to hang their hat on this defense. They've been stopping Texas A&M, but if they're going to win this game with 94 seconds to go, it's going to be on the defensive end. 21 for Taylor. Six-point lead for Mississippi State. The lob. That's a turnover. 
So Mississippi State elects not to slow it down as they have. Dexter Dennis, pull up three, air ball. Coleman grabs the miss, lays it in, and just like that, it is a four-point game. Mississippi State's made a bunch of really smart plays down the stretch, and then there's that. Mission. Drawing fouls. Texas A&M is down. There's a lot of time they're not going to be in foul mode. But if you do get fouled, understand the importance of the free throws. Be aggressive, but have some pace to have a long, long possession. Trying to trap in the backcourt. Mississippi State breaks the press. Cam Matthews this time doesn't try to get an alley-oop. By the way, if they had converted the alley-oop a minute ago, they'd have blown the roof off the no, building. nothing to talk about. It, it could, could have been a moment where the game could be over. You go up eight. The roof goes off the gym. Everybody had the energy flowing, but it's the risk versus the reward. Yeah. You miss that on the counterattack. Texas A&M goes down, gets a wide open three-point attempt. They miss it, but because of de floor, uh, poor defensive transition balance, they get an easy putback from Henry Coleman. Big free throws here for Matthews. He makes the first. Mississippi State with the substitution. Sean Jones back in replacing Eric Reed. A good substitution with Sean Jones. He's been really active on the defensive end. He can call some fits and also with his height and length can finish the possession with some rebounds. Texas a and is going to have to go here. 105 to play. Wade Taylor with the ball in his hand. A&M down six. Dumps it off. Coleman invites the defense and draws the foul with the ball fake. Good play by Texas A&M, getting to their playmaker, Taylor, getting into the teeth of the defense, finding the drop-off opportunity. Good job by Mississippi State. If you're going to foul at this point in the game, you got to foul hard. You can't allow any layups. It's a no-layup rule at this point in the game with one minute and one second to go in the ballgame. Cam Matthews charged with his third. Coleman makes it a five-point game with 61 seconds remaining. Bulldogs go offense for defense as Reed comes back in and Jones goes to the big. Coleman got them both. Henry Coleman now in double figures. Texas A&M get into the press. First double-digit scoring game for Henry Coleman since February 4th. Mississippi State trying to break the press. They do. Sean Davis pulls it back. And him down four. They're going to play this one straight up. Intelligent decision by State. And him has to have a stop if you're going to let this much time go off the clock. Tolu Smith down to three. And that's a travel. Mississippi State turns it over. And so the gamble to play straight up defense that time in a four-point game pays off for Texas A&M. Really good for Texas A&M to play straight up defense. Now you got an opportunity with 34.4 to go in the game, but not a bad situation for Mississippi State. Now, of course, if you told Smith, you want to get that ball on the board, tee it up, shoot the three. It was only five seconds to go and let it fly. But more so, the turnover gets you back in defense to set up shot. Wade Taylor turns it over. Tolu Smith waiting on a guard. He's fouled by Henry Coleman with 26.7 to play. That's the last thing you expected to see from four in Maroon. No, you don't want to see him turn it over. But, you know, when you play so many times, and as I mentioned, you're taking the bump. You've been getting the foul calls. There was a situation where the foul was not called for Mississippi State. Uh, intelligent decision right there. Comes up with the steal. Now a chance to extend your lead at the free throw line. Two shots here for Tolu Smith. 16.6 rebounds today. This is the first. He's 4-7 from the line. A lot of time left in this game for Texas A&M. Mississippi State, you want to make sure you get back in defensive transition because you know that Texas A&M is going to get the ball to Wade and try to push it up the court, court quickly. Texas A&M riding a six-game SEC winning streak. The longest in the league. They find themselves down five with less than 30 seconds to play. Radford picks up a little extra time with the ball rolling. Radford on the drive, and that is an offensive foul. That may do it. Outstanding 
play by Tony Smith. Textbook. 11 and 0. Then they stumbled and they started SEC play 1 and 7. It was a brutal schedule with two games against Tennessee, two games against Alabama, and a road trip to Auburn during that early stretch for Mississippi State in conference play. Yeah, but regardless of the losses, this is a squad that no one in the conference wanted to see. Tough games, close games, they've not been able to figure them, finish them out. But defensively, what they can do to you, I don't know if any other teams have the personnel to do the same. The Mississippi State is 21.8 seconds from their seventh win in the last nine games. A quad one win if they're able to finish it off. And a little bit more breathing room we would anticipate when Joe Lunardi gives us an update later tonight. And the free throws here by Cam Matthews, critical. Texas A&M is 21.8 seconds to go in the game. You know, we've seen a lot of things happen. They have some good shooters on the court right now. Uh, Mississippi State electing not to put any on the free throw line. I guess they're going to make sure that they're going to try to keep everything in front of them, anticipating the speed coming in this. Bulldogs have made seven of eight from the line in the last two minutes of the game. Long pass ahead into the corner. Texas A&M, time winding down. Off balance three, no. Deshaun Davis with the rebound. Mississippi State going to win at home against Texas A&M and snap the Aggies' six-game winning streak. As the Bulldogs tournament hopes not only stay alive, but the light gets a little bit brighter. A statement win for Mississippi State with the hottest team in the conference with the Texas A&M Aggies coming in on the road.